This video shows how to install an Ericsson Minilink 6363 microwave radio. Minilink 6363 is available for all traditional microwave frequency bands as well as E-band. It connects with a radio cable to a Minilink indoor unit. Let's go through the installation step by step. For every microwave link, there are parameters that must be decided before the installation. In this case, they are printed in a site installation document. This document contains information for the installation team. For example, where to mount and how to configure the Minilink. Check that you have all the information you need before you start the installation. Also, make sure to have the Installing Minilink 6363 manual at hand. For this installation, you will need wrenches and hex keys of different sizes, a torque wrench, cutting pliers and a knife, a measuring tape, and a voltmeter. Binoculars and a compass can be handy to find the direction to the other end of the link. You will also need a laptop and a USB cable to connect to the mini USB port on the Minilink indoor unit. Check the delivered boxes for damage. Then use the packing notes as a checklist to verify that the delivery is complete. Unpack and assemble the delivered equipment in a clean and dry location. It is important that dirt and moisture do not get into the connectors and interfaces. The delivery consists of the Minilink 6363 units, the antennas, the ordered length of radio cable, radio cable connector kits, radio cable earthing kits, and grounding cables. For this installation, we have also ordered cable clamps and straps. The two Minilink 6363 units are delivered as a matched pair. Each radio is labeled with its subband index. In this case, the frequency band is 15 GHz and the subbands are 01L and 01H for low and high transmitter frequency. This radio link has one 30 centimeter antenna at each end. The antennas come in several parts that must be assembled before their installation. The delivery for each antenna contains the antenna dish, rubber gasket and silicon grease, an interface module, an interface plate, and screws for it. It also includes parts for the antenna mount and a printed assembly instruction. Follow the instructions to assemble the antenna mount and attach it to the antenna. Add some grease and fit the gasket. Attach the interface module. The orientation of the interface module depends on the polarization of the antenna. The small point on the interface module must fit one of the holes in the interface plate. Check the site installation document to see which polarization to use. This link has vertical polarization. The antenna can be mounted on the right or the left-hand side of the mast. In this installation, the antenna will be on the right, so mount the interface plate like this with the two hooks facing upwards. This way, the connectors on the radio will face downwards when the radio is installed in the mast. Remove the waveguide protection tape from the antenna and the radio. Hang the radio on the two hooks of the interface plate and fasten it by tightening the screw at the bottom. Now the assembly is ready for installation. The radio cable is delivered on a drum, so you can cut the cable to the length that you need. Mount the radio cable connector for the outdoor end of the cable as described in the assembly instruction in the radio cable connector kit. During outdoor installations, always follow the safety regulations for working at height. Check the site installation document for where and how high up in the mast the radio unit assembly must be installed. 
Also, look for a landmark in the direction of the other end of the link. Lift the assembly to the correct position in the mast. Secure it with a rope during installation. If required, measure the height. Fasten the V-clamp bracket around the mast and use your landmark to point the antenna towards the other end of the link. Tighten the bracket with a torque wrench. Connect the grounding cable from the radio unit to a grounding point in the mast. Lift the radio cable to the radio unit. Avoid sharp bends on the cable so you do not damage it. Use weather and UV light resistant cable clamps to fasten the cable to the mast. Do not use cable straps directly on the radio cable because this may degrade the performance. Place the topmost clamp below the Mini Link 6363 so the cable reaches it in smooth bends. Connect the radio cable. Make sure that it is possible to adjust the direction of the antenna without causing any sharp bends or tension to the cable. Do not place any excessive cable length here. Clamp the cable downwards along the mast. The distance between clamps must be less than one meter. Use the weather protection kit to protect the connector from moisture and corrosion. Peel off the protective paper from the butyl sealing compound, stretch it and attach it around the connector. Make sure to completely cover the connector all the way up to the radio and down over the radio cable. Wrap one layer of the included PVC tape from the top of the connector around the butyl sealing compound in a spiral down to the cable. Finish by wrapping one more layer back up to the top. Use a knife to cut off the tape. Ground the radio cable before it enters an indoor location. The parts you need for this are included in the delivered earthing kits. Now cut the radio cable to the correct length and mount the connector for the indoor end of the cable. Connect the cable to your Minilink indoor unit. Check the site installation document for which modem to connect to. Connect a laptop to the indoor unit and configure the radio parameters for antenna alignment. When the radios on both sites are active, align the antennas at the two sites, one at a time. Use the adjusters for azimuth and elevation while measuring the received signal strength with a voltmeter. Sweep the antenna over a wide angle to make sure you find the main lobe. Before you leave, check that all screws are fastened correctly. This finishes the installation. Your Minilink 6363 can now be set to operational mode.